we do need to hit the pause button and look at instead of fear drive letting this whole um this drive this th this thinking we need to take a pause and really think that is it really the case i mean if you just look at cdc's own report the number of deaths for this year from covid is 350,000 that's 0.1% of our population is that really emergency there are more people who are dying 10 times more people who are dying from cardiovascular or other chronic conditions this is not the only thing that has long haul effects people deny long haul effects from lyme disease in countries like india there are people who have chikungunya and dengue those have long term effects malaria typhoid i've had typhoid twice in my life i've had malaria i mean you can have long haul effects from so many other infectious diseases right. but um you stopped gene therapy trials because four people died you were using adeno associated vectors here thousands of people have died but we don't want to hit the pause button we continue with the narrative that it's safe and we continue to mandate it to me the biggest issue is forcing everyone to have it and then making people feel who are not who have genuine fear of not taking it make them feel like they are heels that they are there are some evil people who who are there to destroy this world or they are so selfish or they are and to then hear the president of the united states say the same words that this is a pandemic of the unvaccinated and that they are unself they are selfish people is outrageous yeah and and again goes to the conflict of interest being knowing that pharmaceuticals are the one of the top contributors to campaign contributions and all of the other ways in which money is involved in all of these different things i mean the conflict of interest is a major issue that yeah. we have to that we have to take a look at and i think your analysis of the situation as a whole um is really well said and and look for everybody listening like it's important that we speak up you know i mean there's a you know again referring to the podcast with Matthias Desmet which i really recommend to everybody there's a effect called mass formation where people start to get in this herd mentality this this kind of mass hypnosis where they just keep hearing the same information which is triggered like a hypnotist through vocal repetition of the mm -hmm. same things over and over again and how news media is saying the same thing literally the same thing on every different channel you know and there's really powerful clips of the exact same words coming out of all of these different channels which pretend like they don't you know like each other but they're all saying the same thing and then all of a sudden there becomes this this state where it's very difficult to it's very difficult to convince someone of something other than what they've been you know in some ways hypnotized to believe but one way to do it is to use our voices in in a rational logical calm loving way to be a different voice a voice that says you know it's also important to consider the quality of our lives and and choosing how we live over worrying about how likely we are to die you know i mean we're not here to prevent death at all cost we're here to live an amazing beautiful life and so let's look at this thing holistically and uh, and the more people who can share that message from all the different perspectives you know the better off we'll be and we need that mm -hmm. you know we need to, we need to take a stand but also the finger pointing the villainization the dehumanization on both sides like no matter who you are like don't be calling somebody a sheep you know that's dehumanization that's not going to help anything you tell you call someone a sheep and then you expect them to listen to your point of view get out of here you know don't be calling someone a domestic terrorist if you're on the other side like that's not going to work you're not going to have any conversations this isn't going to work you know i have a i have a organization i'm developing called united polarity and the idea of that is to recognize that we may have different opinions but underneath all that there's the commonality that we're all human beings in a human experience and there should be reverence for that on all sides and if you start with the reverence for each other and then you can start to explore the ideas and you know that's just my heartfelt you know prayer for the world is that we start to listen to each other respect each other you know open the dialogues and i i truly believe that you know truth is like a beach ball that you're trying to keep submerged underwater 
and it just keeps gathering air and takes more and more effort to submerge the truth and eventually it's so buoyant that it comes to the surface and uh and i really believe that the truth of everything that's going on will come to the surface but we're a part of that every time we give our voice to you know what we see and what we what we hear and what we believe it adds a little bit of air to that beach ball and makes it a little more buoyant and uh and that's the way that we're gonna make it through this thing yeah and i think you know just like we said neither of us are anti-vaccine by any means it's just we believe that you should be able to make your own decision and do a risk analysis that's what life is based off of every time you get in a car you're making a risk assessment right yep. so for them to start mandating something and pretend that it's 100 completely safe and effective zero zero risk at all that's what we're talking about as an issue right because if there are people that do have comorbidities and they are afraid of covid which there's a lot of people that are very afraid of covid and sh should maybe be so and those people if they want to take a vaccine then by all means they should have the ability to do so yeah and if you're not as you know apt to get serious covid and you don't want to make that risk of taking the vaccine when we're seeing a lot of people that are younger getting injured then i think that's a fair ask yeah absolutely I mean, it's, 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 it's very difficult to argue with that, but yeah. some people still will. Yeah. Any final words, doctor? No, I just hope that, like you said, people are open-minded and listen. And like, I cannot emphasize enough that the future of science is at stake. If people um, lose faith in science because this was so boshed up, if it does indeed turn out that these vaccines are causing so much more harm than causing benefit and people lose faith in science, then for me, it's all, all my life I've dedicated to science and that's just going to crumble. Yeah. And, and then, then what? I mean, for the next medication that comes out that could be really truly groundbreaking and beneficial, nobody will want to touch it. Yeah. And I mean, and it's not like... FDA or CDC or they don't make mistakes. I mean, what's happened with opioid crisis? It took them forever to even recognize it. Sure. Um, approval of new Alzheimer's drug. Uh, everybody on the panel voted to say, no, it's not effective. And yet they went ahead and approved it. So I, I definitely can't get into their minds and say what what is behind all of that. But I do appeal that, you know, Let's do good science before we throw out that science is clear. No, science is not clear. Yeah, that's that's a huge fear of mine as well because the mRNA technology has so much promise. Right, it has so much promise and in, in fixing things like potentially even cancer and AIDS, things like this. Right, there's so much that we're learning about mRNA, and now if this does become this massive botched experiment with no communication from the government, then anything mRNA in the future is going to be discredited. Mm -hmm. And, and they've been trying mRNA, mRNA, Moderna's mRNA flu vaccine was a was a colossal failure. It didn't go past phase one. They had in their phase one uh, 124 unsolicited adverse events reported. There have been people trying mRNA vaccines for HIV and other uh, viruses, and it hasn't worked. So my question is, and there was this, their flu vaccine trial was on clinicaltrials.gov. What happened between 2019 and 2020 that a very similar technology went from being a failure to a spectacular success with no side effects, no safety issues? How, if something is too good to be true, it is. Yep. Yeah, we've gone from science to uh, magic, and not the good kind of magic. Because I'm all I'm all for the good kind of magic, but yeah. not the not the smoke and mirrors, uh, not the smoke and mirrors type. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. I appreciate you guys for making the trip out here and and, yeah. uh, and sharing this discourse. And I appreciate everybody for listening with an open mind. Uh, or if you don't have an open mind, I appreciate you listening <laughs> anyways. And uh, just um, you know, and so much, so much love to everybody who's struggling with this and their family personally um anybody who's had any issues and and anybody who's whether that's with the virus itself or with the vaccine you know let's all remember that um you know there's there's tragedies on every side and this doesn't you know you shouldn't be rooting for if you're and you know 
against the vaccine narrative. You shouldn't be rooting for people to get injured because these are people who are, they're people. Remember that every vaccine injury is a, is a tragedy. And on the other side, you know, if, if people who are unvaccinated get sick and get hurt, shouldn't be rooting for that either. These are people who are, they're like us. They're me and you living a different life. And yeah. so remember, just remember, these are all not numbers. These are people. And, um, and people are, you know, invaluable. Yeah. Invaluable and they cannot be reduced.